Hello there, I'm your host Dan Rojas, and I get asked all the time, why don't you take a large Fresnel lens or parabolic dish, focus it on some fiber cable, and run some lighting into your house? That'd make a really neat video. And that's true, it would be, but there are two main problems with that. The first is heat buildup. Fresnel lenses and parabolic dishes can create heat in excess of 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. This would pretty much destroy anything you put in front of it. There are ways of getting around that by going short of the focal length or focusing the light on a bright, shiny object and then capturing that light as it bounces off. That's going to be covered in a future video. We're going to get to that later. For now, we're going to be covering problem number two, and that is the cost of fiber cable. Most optical fiber cable that's designed today is used for data transfer, so it has to be pretty well near perfect. And that doesn't necessarily have to be the case for lighting inside of your house. So I went on eBay and I bought this 600 foot spool of optical fiber. I paid 90 bucks for it with shipping and the picture wasn't that great, but what do you expect? It's optical fiber. When I started stripping this down, I was pretty disappointed. Now, I knew this stuff was jacketed. I knew that it wasn't as thick as the wire is. But when I did strip it down, I found this. Two very, very thin strands. Now I'm going to show you a close-up of these and show you how much light they transmit. So when I stripped it down, this is what's inside. This is the amount of optical fiber that you actually get. This is roughly about two or three times the thickness of a human hair. If you have a good head of hair, then it's about as thick as your hair is. And I have a laser pointer here. So what we're going to do is we're going to shine the light on one end. Hopefully it'll pick that up. Let's see if we can do this. You can see the end that's closest to the camera lights up when you do that. Put the brighter light on. Now, this would be great if you were doing a Christmas tree. But cable this thick for lighting inside of your house, you're going to need a lot of it. So my plan was to strip this down, bundle these together, maybe put 12 strands in there. But this spool at $90 would only give me about 50 feet. It's not a big deal if you're going from one point like a... 50 watt quartz light inside your house to another room but when you're going from your roof or outside you need a lot of footage for it so it actually would get pretty expensive which brings me back to here and the whole reason that I'm sitting in front of a Christmas tree other than the fact that it's Christmas time this is some prototype cable that I made this is just basically a resin that hardened inside of a tube and I cut the tube off the problem with this is that this does not transfer light any more than maybe 8 inches. There's a lot of bubbles in this material too, so it didn't really work out that well. This, however, really works pretty good. This is a crystal clear fiberglass resin that I put inside of regular poly tube. Now, I'm going to show you with some Christmas lights how well it works, and then I'm also going to show you with the laser. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take this in and point it at the camera, and put it over a red light. I'm going to put it over a green light. And we're going to put it over a blue light. Now you're going to notice that the blue light has an interesting feature to it. It's got a green tinge to it. So what I'm going to do is take the laser pointer and I'm going to shine it on the end of the cable. This is about almost three feet long. It's a little bit short of that. Now this is the, the LED light that came with this. So we've got the laser. We can go back and forth. Now this particular material that I used has a little bit of a yellow tinge to it. That's why the blue light kind of turned a greenish color and it's also why the LED, which is a pretty blue light itself, also turned green. It may not have looked totally green, but it, did ha it does have a green green tinge to it. There is a better material out there that we're working with. This company has it. It's supposed to be crystal clear, non-yellowing. supposed to be very, very good at transmitting light. Now there are companies out there that are extruding plastic for this very application. It's kind of a complex process and something you probably wouldn't be able to do yourself. The other problem with that is that they charge anywhere from three to seven dollars a foot. If you're buying a 20 foot section, it's really not a big deal. But to really do some serious lighting in your house, you would need anywhere from a couple hundred feet to even up to 500 feet to do a project, especially if you're capturing sunlight off of your roof or from outside. $3,500 for fiber optic lighting in your house, there's probably better ways that you can spend that money. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to make this. And you can pretty much get about a thousand foot for less than a hundred bucks. All right, what I have is a regular paint cap. I like to use these because they're disposable. You can actually pop the resin out and you end up with cool shapes like this. I'm going to be using these to do a clear piston for a demo. But you can see that these just pop out and then you can reuse that paint top. I've got some fiberglass resin in there. This is the crystal clear or water clear type. They go by two different names. This stuff smells really bad. You don't really want to get this on you or in your eyes. You want to be in a well ventilated area. You want to be especially cautious with the MEK, the hardener that comes with this. We're going to mix this up. And if you get it around the outsides, that's fine. What I usually do is mix the inside really well. And then pour it around so that way you get a nice mixture. You can actually use two lids. I have another one here. And just pour it back and forth. You're going to get a few air bubbles, but hopefully those settle to the top. And you just pour it back into this one. Now, if you let it sit for a little bit, the bubbles will go away. If you mix it carefully, you won't get bubbles. I actually have some bubbles in this, but I'm doing the best I can with it. Now, this is a really short piece of poly tube. The way that you get the material inside of this, you can fill a syringe and squirt it in. It makes a big mess. The easiest way to do it is to place the syringe over the end. So once you have this seated on the syringe, you're going to make sure there's no air in here. You're going to stick this down in your solution and then you're going to draw it up by pulling on the syringe. It's a little tricky to do, but you get it just right. And you can actually see it come up the tube and then stop just short of your syringe so you don't damage your syringe. And then what you're gonna do, you basically have this tube filled now. So you're gonna just take this and you're gonna put it so it doesn't drip out. This should start to harden in about 25 minutes. You can tape the ends. What you're gonna end up with is something that looks like this. Now one thing you want to keep in mind when you do this, you want to, you're going to, your ends don't have to be completely closed. If you have a little air bubble on each end, that's fine. What you do want to do is cut this stuff about an hour after it starts to cure. You just want to snip it off right where you need it because this stuff will become very rigid. This material isn't the greatest for this project. It is somewhat flexible and it will hold up. If you accidentally snap it, like, it's actually kind of hard to snap, but if you do snap it, it's going to ruin the effect and you're going to have to just use that piece there. Again, I'm working on a material that's flexible, crystal clear, should transfer the light really well, has a low bubble production, and is a little bit thinner than this, so it should go through pretty good. One other thing is you want to make sure if you're doing a really long piece, you want to make sure that your cure times are set so that way you're not halfway through it and it starts to harden on you. This is a neat little project for you to do, and uh, I encourage you, if you have some resins laying around, or just give it a shot and see what you get. Also, start looking for crystal clear material that's really good out there and email it to me, and I'll include it in the video of where people can get it. I'm your host, Dan Rojas. Thank you for watching, and enjoy our videos.